is a lot like gardening. Any gardener knows that when you put the seed in the ground, if you're lucky, it will sprout. And if Mother Nature has something else in mind, maybe it won't. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step processes that I use that help me stay in alignment with Mother Nature's process. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start at the place that I'm stuck on this painting. <laughs> and then we'll recycle and, and go back to the very beginning so that you can see the starting of the painting all the way through. But I wanna start at the place that I'm stuck, which is just before it breaks through. <laughs> so the whole process probably took three months. My, the painting process for me is not linear. So when it comes to creating a start to finish video for one painting, my studio doesn't work that way. And what I'm going to show you in this video is the, the way I cultivate my creativity by n nurturing and feeding all of the different uh, paintings at once, like a garden. So let's get started. My journal is my go-to place, and it is my habit to sit in my chair in the morning with a cup of coffee and scan the paintings. And I will make notes from my dreams, or I will make little thumbnail sketches for paintings that I'm stuck on. You know, yes, sometimes I paint, I, I sketch for a new painting, but these are thumbnail sketches for paintings that are in process that I'm stuck on. So the painting in question that we're, that we're talking about today is one of my Meadowlands paintings. And the concept, the starting inspiration for this series was large canvases. I ordered a whole truckload of large canvases and these were going to be like my next series, whatever that was be. I didn't have a, a vision. I just knew that because they were big, they were going to be groundbreaking for me personally, but I didn't know what that would look like. So for me, painting is a process of discovery not having a plan and execute, executing it. I mean, I can do that when I, when I go to balance my checkbook. I can do that in my checkbook. But on my canvas, the plan, is, the, the plan is more like a gardener's plan. What am I doing to cultivate my creativity, to grow myself as an artist? And that's what I really want to share with you. So in this process, my sketchbook wasn't helping on this canvas. <laughs> I was just stuck. So I went to, um, for me, stuck looked like sitting in this chair and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. So much that it just drove me nuts. It's like, it's not going to go anywhere if I'm trying to solve it from the front lobe. And that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to envision what I should do to that canvas to fix it. <laughs> so even though the, even though the thumbnail is already on a small paper, I mean, this is, I don't know seven inches, whatever. I'm gonna still put the edges of the thumbnail box around it. This helps me um, ground my energy. And, and then I'm gonna have a look at the painting and jump off again. So here are the two thumbnails that I made to make the major unstick. And I will say that when I first made them, I liked the second one better than the first one but when it came time to choose which one I was going to use for the leap back into the painting itself, I chose this one. 
So I don't know where we're going today. We're gonna, I'm, go, I'm going to experiment again and see what happens this time. So let's see. Uh, my method for using pastels is color sensing. This is a process that I developed myself during my uh, healing journey. Uh, I'm processing very emotional colors so just whichever color strikes my fancy. Sometimes I always say they look like um, if I scan the pastel trays, uh, one of them is going to jump up and say, me, 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 me. And so I grab that one. So this is already not going anywhere that I thought it was going to go. <laughs> of course. Maybe this is going to turn out to be a real surprise. Who knows? Hmm. So there's all kinds of crazy questions and answers going on in my mind and and almost so much that I can't articulate them. They're happening too fast. So let's just kind of run with it here. All right, stop. Now, I want to come back with a little piece of willow charcoal and square off the edges. And this, this again, I'm in the flow of emotional color and there's no there's no ground rules for that there's no confinement so this helps me ground the uh, the flow same way I did over here and as you can see I've got an entirely different take on it and quite frankly I love this one now better than either of these two but we, I won't be copying this. This is just a jumping off point for going back to the painting in its present state and garnering the energy to finish it. If there was one wish that I had for my personal artistry, it was that my pastels and my oil paintings would come into alignment. Uh, the way I would have said it 30 years ago was, I wish my oil paintings would uh, be as comfortable to speak in that language as my pastels. So for me, pastels were my primary medium. For 20 years, I worked in pastel exclusively when I got out of art school. Okay, so I have a BFA in printmaking. So printmaking is a very draftsman, process-heavy 
you know, think etching, lithography, engraving, silk screen, woodcut, all of that. Very process oriented, very disciplined, and very um, <clears throat> draftsman like. Uh, lots of drawing. So, drawing, drawing, drawing. <clears throat> and my minor was painting. I didn't really start working in pastel, I only did a little bit of pastel in college. Out, once I got out of, out, of, out of pastel, out of college, then I picked up pastel and worked in pastel exclusively. When the assault happened, the, the see and grab, shoot from the hip uh, method of expressing emotions that there weren't words for came through loud and clear with the pastels. They, I could scream with pastels in ways that I didn't have to stop and mix it up and figure it out. And so uh, after two decades of working in pastel, I not only healed my unexpressed emotions from the assault, from the trauma, but I, but I also developed this, this um, alignment between my body and the color. I didn't really understand it at the time, but I could feel it. And I wanted that, that alignment between my, my body and the color to happen for the oil paints as well. And now that's present. So the processes that I'm giving you are, are much more foundational to uh, the creative process in general, because let's face it, the creative process and the healing process are one and the same thing. It's not one or the other. If we, if we um, cultivate our creativity, we are also healing ourselves because the human being has that capability. So you can promote your own wellness and your own vitality with art. It's normal to attach and to let go, to attach and let go. It's like breathing. So what you're watching is me thinking that I know what it's gonna do and then letting go and then worrying about whether it's gonna be and then letting go and then whatever and then letting go and then a thought and then letting go. You can hear the heavy breathing. You can hear the sigh per periodically as the breast strokes, I turned the volume way up on the video, so I'll just be quiet for a little bit here so that you can hear how the, the relationship between the physical body, it's not so much what's happening on the canvas as it is what's happening in your body and whether or not you are um, holding on too tightly or not grounding. So you can, you can be too unattached or too attached. And being in the flow is about being, bo being both, letting go, grounding again, letting go, grounding again. And so what that might look like is, okay, mixing a little color, maybe you ground when you do that, there's a little friction there, there's a little friction when you brush against the canvas, that's grounding. You see something on the canvas that surprises you, okay, you let go again. So it's constant, it's, it's like alternating, it's what I would call alternating current. Grounding, let go. Grounding, flow. Grounding, flow. Grounding, flow. It's a pulse. And this refinement part, uh, finishing a painting, requires fine tuning of this. So there's a tendency I think we have to get very attached to the results. Are, is the painting going to turn out? I mean, we're all attached to how it's going to look and whether it's going to be a real bona fide painting or not. Or is it going to go in the trash? <laughs> it might go in the trash. And that 
ability to detach and then let the flow come again and detach and let the flow come again and reground it and reground it and let it go and come back. That is the process in a nutshell. So I have developed methods for promoting, cultivating my ability to do that, to be more comfortable with being uncomfortable and letting the flow state happen. Okay, so in part one, we've been talking about opening the flow. In part two, we're going to talk about how to expand the flow. To do that, we're gonna rewind and go back and look at how this painting started. So go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and um, leave a comment. Let me know what your wish for painting is. That this painting actually started as a vertical. back up okay in its vertical position as I laid out the abstract composition for this piece it felt watery to me to balance the canvas so I would stand in front of the canvas and feel the you know it's life size, so you could almost see the figure if there were a figure in the center of the canvas. It's like, okay, I am the river, and so when I'm balancing the canvas, I'm feeling it in my body. And when the canvas gets rotated, I actually worked on this one upside down for a little while very little well, but nonetheless, it was there. I wouldn't leave it that way, but it would also, um, <laughs> it could easily function as a vertical piece. Here's the one, they're kind of on different height easels, so I'll just kind of pan here a little bit. One with the, with the grays, and now you can see where the white little pieces of collage in the one with the gray are coming from because I've taken the texture that I was using on this one and added a few little pieces of texture onto here. And I was really just painting with the texture uh, the color is really immaterial at this stage of the game because it's going to get more color anyway. These are just underpainting colors. And the same thing with this one over here. I'm, I'm thinking about tying the texture from this one to this one to this one in different proportions. So I want a series of three so it's like telling a story, not a linear story, but these need to be companions and play well together. Today so, I am um, picking up the thread of inspiration on the 40 by 60 collages, and I, I have turned them sideways on the, on the easels. So we've got one over here, we've got another one down here, and we've got another one here. So they, the collages were built three verticals and I built the collage out of um, handmade paper and acrylic gesso and some tinted colors. So um, over the weekend, I was working on another landscape project and um, just ha had a whim to turn them sideways and have a look at them. And so um, I began to see the, the abstract shapes in different ways. And this feels a little landscapey to me, like big clouds and I love the gold undertones. Uh, so yesterday I, I started in on 
painting back into them with oil paint. So now when I switch from the base coats of acrylic to oil, um, I have used um, clear gesso, clear acrylic gesso in all my mediums um, and acrylic med and acrylic layers on the on the bottom side. And all the handmade papers are sealed with this um, acrylic gesso. But once I start in with the oil paint, then we don't go back to acrylic. So you don't go oil. You can go oil on top of acrylic as long as it has a toothy um, a surface to it so that it will bond properly. But you can't switch back to acrylic once you switch to oil. It's a no-no. Your painting will fall apart. Don't do that. So, um, and even down in here where you see the, um, the handmade papers, these are all sealed with um, clear gesso. So they have a nice kind of a sandpapery feel. And when I put the oil paint on it, it will stay put. It will bond, it's, it's like, um, oh, almost like wool uh, fibers on a sweater where they knit, knit themselves together. And let's go over and look at this one real quick. So I'm gonna paint and I'm gonna turn the video on and let you um, see into the process here. Medium, impasto oil medium, uh, which gives me uh, the three-dimensional, you know, my brush stroke will stay standing up where I put it and it also dries overnight. So this is dry, even though I painted it yesterday afternoon, this is dry right here, down in here in the red one. This is dry. I mean, it's not super, super dry, but it's dry enough for me to touch it. And um, and you can see how it's going over top of this gritty handmade paper and making wonderful textures. Now, I will say that the areas where the circles are, you can see the kind of superimposed circles. These were from the handmade paper that I collaged on there. And um, while I want some of them to remain and use the textures, I don't want them all to stay. So as I begin to build layers up with my palette knife here, they will start to uh, be blended away. You can kind of see them starting to go away down in here, over in here. It's hard to tell where they are and where they aren't. Let's go back up a little higher. Get you up here. The top edge is, is um, similar. Um, and I'm so I'm using a palette knife to draw and paint with, and I'm also using a pigment uh, oil stick to, to draw with. And a lot of the blending is happening on the canvas. All right, so I'm gonna put some paint together and then we'll paint.
Okay, so I'm stepping back to uh, look from a distance and um, just be with the, uh, the balance or the imbalances as they may be. Uh, what you see going on while I'm not talking, I'm mixing, um, I'm using pure pigments and then I'm mixing them on the canvas. Mm -hmm. So some of them are mixing optically with what's underneath that's already dry or maybe semi-dry from yesterday or the day before. And others are, uh, so you know, the, the, when the blues went on top of the yellows, we've got some, some of that mixing wet and wet. And, um, and then we also have the cool yellow and the warm yellow playing off against each other. This is really soft in here from yesterday, these greens. Um, and that's what I wanted. I wanted the strong um, uh, primary yellows to come out from underneath. So as I build on top of it, those sparks of light will, will continue to peek through. The thought process is not about objects or making it look like something. So I'm pulling the energy from down here in my emotional center, and um, and I'm and I'm using my body. I'm I'm letting that energy come up through my body and go out my arms. So it's not going through my head. I'm not using my thinking brain. I'm using my body, my energy body, to pull this um, pattern together. And um, when I stand in front of the canvas and do this, this is why I'm not t trying to talk and do it at the same time. It comes out better if I'm not trying to find words because in order to find words, we have to go here. And this doesn't require that. This short circuits the whole process and sends you right from the emotion out into action. No words. I am using a pattern. So the, with just like a rhythmic pattern. If you were dancing, you would be following a rhythmic pattern and moving across the floor, but you're not thinking about which steps are going where. So that's what I'm doing. I'm letting this energy go here and just letting it out of me. And yes, I want a light pattern. So there's an intent behind what I'm doing. So I'm taking this energy and, uh, how do you want to say, um, directing it, channeling, I'm channeling it into a particular place. So I'm saying, okay, um, uh, uh, please let's have some light up in this corner <laughs> or let's have a dance up here that will come down in here. So there is a light source for what's going on. And there's an intent here to have this light here because, you know, yes, I do have a landscape in mind of water, but I'm not I'm not hooked at on making it look realistic. I, I'm, I want it to feel how I feel. I want it to feel right. I want it to say something deeper than, oh, that's a pretty picture over there. I, I don't care about that. Now I want, now I want to build this area up. So I'm going to step back and, um, pull in some um, some of those hard greens that are just going to feel really fertile. I want it to feel fertile and um, oh, I love that green. It's really meadowy and, and comforting, but in this shadowy area, it's still going to have that play of light and shadow, but this side's going to be more low key, whereas this side is more high key. So we're setting up a counterbalance here. All right, let's just paint. So I've got uh, lemon yellow and a little green. So I want to pick. I want to make a coolish green that will come in here and give me some of this warmth. I want it to be thick enough that it starts to fill in some of this texture. Uh, you know, if 
I decide I don't like it, I'll just paint over it. It's no big deal. Mm. Now, did you see how that happened? I, you know, I can say I want, but the truth is, if it goes over there, then there's the, okay, I'm going to run with it. And can I always come back and this anchors this um, compositional element over to the left-hand side, so if you notice, if I spread my arms out and square my body to the canvas, it's anchored here and here, it's anchored here and here, and the center of the body goes up like this. I can feel this inside my body. It's coming out like this. That's where it's really coming from. It's not up here. So when I shut up and um, listen to the painting, she speaks. As soon as I turned the camera off, I could hear her speaking from up here. And the message was, gee, um, a little shadow. I think it's dangerous to think. <laughs> uh, all right, step back and just, all right, so what I'm doing now, you can't see me on canvas, but I'm on the uh, video, but I'm spreading my arms and squaring my body to the canvas to see if I can feel the details. Uh, so the only message I'm getting is like a little something counterbalance down here because I was think I was thinking that it goes up here but it didn't feel that way when I stopped to um, do the sensory part uh, yeah I'm running out of paint here All right, that was really just what was left on my knife. And uh, I've learned to trust that. Uh, there's a lot of resistance to trusting that. So if that's something that bugs you, <laughs> welcome to the club. Just put a little interference in here. This one's going to rest at least overnight. Uh, yeah, it's for me. It helps to s stop when the when the energy flow stops. I don't push through it. I step back. That's the automatic signal to pause and to let the energy settle. So what's going on with your? You know, we've been channeling the creative energy, bringing it up out of the body and then directing it out the arm with specific intent to capture an emotion, a feeling we don't need to know in words what the emotion is. Okay, so this releases a lot of stuff. You can have a lot of complicated, tangled up emotions in there, and that's okay. They can all come out in paint, and as soon as they come out in paint, you've released them all. 
this is a really good thing. <laughs> this is a very good thing. So when the, when the inspiration hits the crest like that and it stops speaking, that means pause. Just like in music, you have a rest that's written right into the music. That's what that means. So stop painting, put the brush down, step back, let it sit. This is incubation time and you're working on it. You're leaving it be, which means that you've temporarily disconnected the, the threads of energy that are connecting your body to the canvas. So you're gonna go out in the other room, you're gonna do whatever you do, you're gonna eat, you're gonna have dinner, you're gonna go sleep. You might spend a day doing something else, you might spend a month doing something else, but when you come back, you're gonna see and feel this newly. And that's gonna give you the opportunity. It's gonna be a first gut reaction when you first walk in and see it because she's gonna look foreign to you. She's, you're not gonna necessarily recognize her, or maybe you will. I mean, I've had paintings that just brought me to tears because there was something so deep in there that I recognized myself in a way that I never knew was in there. So it can be either or, and just your, your gut reaction might be, oh, holy crap, I made a mess. That's okay too. I have that one all the time. And there's the, oh, I gotta fix her, but you know, you really don't. <laughs> don't. She's just who she is. And letting her have her say is a good thing. So she's gonna rest. And in the meantime, if I still have the energy to want to paint, I will direct the flow onto a different canvas. And that's working out the thing that's driving me to want to do that without disturbing what's here. So we hit the pause mark on this one. If we have go on another one, we can work, we can paint on another one. When that one hits the pause, then we put that one on pause. So that my whole point here is that the incubation part is really, really, really important. So don't skip it.